everybody, William Badia Brown here, and this is going to be day one on my research and development YouTube series. Um, I'm a citizen scientist here in New Cumberland, Pennsylvania, a certified permaculture designer, and I run a mushroom business, um, for those of you that don't know who I am. Um, and yeah, we're here in my laboratory in New Cumberland, Pennsylvania. This is a home laboratory, just to show that anybody can be doing this kind of citizen science work in their home. Um, in my backyard, I have two uh, bigger garden beds. I had to leave some space for my dog. Uh, but they're filled with edible mushrooms. I got some mushroom logs, up, logs on the side. I have two pasteurizers for doing my mushroom production uh, where, I, where I produce uh, 32 uh, pasteurized sawdust bags. Um, I'm actually about to do an inoculation of some lion's mane uh, to provide uh, for local markets and restaurants and uh, provide for my family. Um, so yeah, a lot, of a lot of stuff going on, but with all that, I'm doing lots of research and development. Uh, for sustainable applications and microsystems for homes and also micro models that could be uh, expanded to provide uh, a, a platform for green businesses and all sorts of things like that. So I've been educating my community actively, uh, trying to influence um, more green uh, sustainable jobs and educate the people on how to uh, work these kinds of systems. Um, so my business is called Mycosymbiotics um, because I believe that the way to counter the Anthropocene or the destruction of our planet by human activities is to work with other organisms and usher in the symbiocene. So, uh, mycosymbiotics, I believe that working with multiple organisms together, we can recreate natural systems and uh, design systems that work. So that's why I became a permaculture designer, uh, to learn a little bit more about how I can effectively design natural systems. And through that, I've been doing lots of citizen science research. And um, I'll tell you a little bit about what I've been doing. Uh, so. Um, over the past year, I've been uh, starting to play around with uh, microalgae, um, working with different uh, cyanobacteria like spirulina, the Arthrospira genus. Um, I've also worked with uh, microalgae such as chlorella and hematococcus and uh, marine phytoplankton like the nanochloropsis, um, which I've done some videos on under the FICO permaculture series and you can look that up. Um, and in this video, I just really wanted to touch on uh, day one of our commercial cordyceps uh, cultivation. Uh, so cordyceps militaris is a cordyceps that's easier to cultivate um, and it has the same uh, cordycepin and uh, complex uh, compounds uh, that attribute the medicinal benefits to uh, the cordyceps sinensis uh, from Tibet, but uh, sinensis, but uh, it's not the cordyceps sinensis, so it's not the same compounds, but still very uh, interesting cordyceps because we can be able to cultivate this ourselves. Um, so right over here, um, these are my, are my uh, few experiments for commercial quarter uh, cultivation. Um, I've got some of these ideas from the RSTDC videos uh, the, the, uh, where they were cultivating cordyceps on a mass scale um, in a very similar method like this. So uh, everything in here is pretty much sterile um, in getting indirect sunlight um, for their light. I have another one down there and I have a few more that I'm going to be bringing out here. Um, but yeah, this is our Cordyceps Militaris culture. This is a proven fruiting culture. Um, I hosted a Mushroom and Arts Festival last fall uh, where our friend uh, Charlie Aller, the organizer for the Myco Cultivation Collaborative Meetup up in Virginia, he, uh, we were doing lots of foraging and he found a uh, Cordyceps Militaris fruiting from a uh, moth pupae. So I took that Cordyceps to the lab here uh, in New Cumberland. I got the flow hood running right now because I'm about to do those inoculations. Um, but I got a clean culture going, which actually pinned in vitro on the Petri dishes. I send a bunch of those cultures out, and my friend Ryan Paul Gates up in Michigan um, took some, got the cultures to fruit in vitro, took some spore prints, got a spore culture, um, but actually started fruiting out the original culture um, in a similar application like this. So um, if anybody's seen some of the uh, videos coming out of South Asia or any of the material coming out of South Asia, um, a lot of people are going to be cultivating the cordyceps in jars like this um, or little flasks and things uh, with a filter patch uh, so they can breathe on a nutrient-enriched uh, rice medium, usually uh, enriched with a potato broth. There are nutrient salts, um, which we have some uh, various nutrient salts and things like that over there uh, that we're playing around with, uh, which can be modulated and played around with to uh, increase the uh, levels of cordycepin, uh, which is one of the uh, prized compounds that you're going to want to be uh, pretty much utilizing the cordyceps to manufacture. Um, so uh, with that being said, um, I wanted to uh, expand on this because it would take a lot, whole lot of these jars to be uh, to start producing cordyceps on a commercial scale. Um, so I went I went ahead and uh, put them into these cake uh, trays, which come uh, 
with these lids, which are very handy. Uh, they close nice. Uh, they're still a little bit breathable, um, and they will create a, a nice uh, humid convection where the cordyceps mushrooms will be able to produce and reach a full mature size in there. So that's really awesome, and I'm going to continue to update videos as these cordyceps grow. Um, and I decided to ignite this video because I know that I'm going to be able to cultivate these cordyceps um, with my culture here pinning. And besides that, um, Ryan already cultivated the same culture, um, but I was just waiting till I knew that my culture was going to pin and start fruiting before I started releasing any information. So if you see in there, there's a few bumps, uh, and this culture started pinning about after a month of light uh, exposure. Um, and they also went through about um, 10 days of a cold night shock. Um, so that's really cool. And uh, aside from the Cordyceps militaris, um, I also have a local culture of um, Tolipocladium ophioglossoides, uh, known as the black cordyceps or the golden thread cordyceps. Um, and these grow on false truffles, uh, Aphylomyces granulus is what I found this one on. Um, they grow around pine trees sometimes. Um, but I couldn't find much information on this, and I went ahead and put it on the same nutrient uh, enriched rice substrate, and I got it to produce fruiting bodies um, on here. So. Um, not, because I know this culture is capable of producing fruiting bodies and it looks like it might be sporulating, I don't know if it's going to produce a full mature fruit body, I'm going to go ahead and take some spores from this and uh, try and get a more vigorous culture and see if I can't uh, produce some nice mature fruit bodies. So um, that's been the research so far. Um, I've been utilizing the microalgae to cycle uh, CO2 in my mushroom growing room, So, and I've also been cultivating that for food, uh, harvesting the chlorella and the uh, spirulina, and also uh, going to start harvesting the uh, nanochloropsis, which I just got in here uh, recently. And one of the other cool things I'm going to be doing with the microalgae is uh, utilizing that uh, that water uh, heater over there uh, to do some conversions. Uh, I'm going to be pressing oil from my algae and then doing some conversions, uh, chem uh, just chemical conversions, basic compounds, and creating biodiesels that we can utilize to burn for transportation or electricity. So this is William Padilla Brown. I'm coming to you from my home lab in New Cumberland, Pennsylvania. This is the research and development series uh, promoting permaculture, whole systems design, uh, decentralized economies, green businesses, um, and regenerative uh, industries. So um, if you have any questions, feel free to drop that below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up, share on Facebook, Twitter, and any of um, your favorite blogs, all that jazz. Um, other than that, I hope that everybody can take the opportunity to do something good for their neighborhood.